Russia make use from this situation. Taliban continue their fascism in the eastern parts of Afghanistan, where government has no control. They carry on public and executions and kidnappings. Recently, the issue of 23 Korean hostages again showed how powerful the Taliban are. And again, for their release, 20 million dollars were given to such a terrorist gang which will be used against Afghan innocent people. Afghanistan has received billions of dollars in the aid in the past few years. But ordinary people were not benefited from it. It's suffice to say that today only 2% have gone, have access to electricity. And also according to survey they did, over 60% Afghans live below the poverty line and with the, the only $1 per cup. The Afghan government is the most corrupt and unpopular in the world. In a March 2007 survey conducted by Integrity Watch Afghanistan, it was revealed that about 60% Afghans think current administration is more corrupt than any other in the past two decades. Dear friends, my suffering people have been well and truly betrayed over the past six years. The use in its allies is not concerned with the suffering and disastrous conditions of our people. It's in the U.S. strategic and economic interest to put our people in danger as long as its own regional interests are met. Unfortunately, other countries, other U.S. allies, including Canada, are not trying to do anything contrary to the U.S. wrong policies and exactly follow the footpath of the U.S. government. If any government, if any government institutions is really concerned with the plight and catastrophic situation of our people, they should have the guts to adopt a policy against our fundamentalist terrorist bands of any kind and support pro-democracy and freedom-loving groups and individuals. No questions, no questions that Afghan, Afghanistan needs international support to get it into track and rebuild itself. But we don't want occupation. Afghanistan has a long history of opposing foreign invasion. History showed that no nation can bring liberation to another nation. It's the obligation and responsibility of our own people to bring freedom and democracy in their country. solution for disastrous situation of Afghanistan. A long-lasting and permanent peace can be achieved through the efforts of our own people, even if it will require a longer time. So with the current situation, when the U.S. has armed and empowered a bunch of killers, when foreign troops left Afghanistan, a civil war may endanger Afghanistan once again. Because both sides, Taliban terrorists and also Northern Alliance, are fully armed and supported by the foreign countries. But I think if they seriously consider the following points, then the possibility of a civil war can be minimized. The Northern Alliance must be removed from the power and seriously disarmed in, in the way of warlord Ismail Khan disarmed a few years ago. Not true process such as DDR and Dayak, which were funny and useless. The international community and the UN must seriously observe and stop countries like Iran, Pakistan, Russia, Uzbekistan, etc. from sending arms and support to the Taliban or the Northern Alliance killers. <laughs> minded forces and individuals in Afghanistan who have been suppressed for decades. 
so they could rose as an alternative for Afghanistan. But unfortunately, in the past few years, no efforts were made in this regard. In the Wallace threatened and forced democratic-minded institutions to be marginalized. Many Afghans think the U.S. want to keep Afghanistan in current state to legitimate its long presence in the region and make Afghanistan its base for monitoring and controlling the Central Asia republics, China, Iran, and other Asian powers. I think if these troops did not pull out voluntarily in coming future, they may face resistance from people of Afghanistan. Right now, anti-US sentiments are high among people because years of the conflict in Afghanistan have given political consciousness to our people and they know the US has been responsible for pushing Afghanistan to the current tragedies. It was the US which poured billions of dollars during the Cold War into the pocket of the dark-minded Islamist forces then helped the raise of the Taliban and Al-Qaeda. And today, once again, they are supporting the North Alliance fundamentalists. The U.S. has always supported the enemies of Afghan people and all the Afghan terrorist groups are, in fact, products of the U.S. I stress again and again, I stress again and again, that the situation in Afghanistan and conditions of its ill-fated women will never change positively as long as the pro-US terrorists, these North Alliance and anti-US terrorists, these Taliban, will be in power. I think peace loving people in institutions of Canada must realize the fact to help and empower democratic-minded and freedom-loving groups and individuals of Afghanistan who could stand up and able to fight the terrorism and fundamentalism. You are sure of solidarity and support empower me with the determination to fight the enemies of democracy and humanity in my devastated Afghanistan. The fundamentalists are counting their days to eliminate me, but I believe in and follow the noble saying of the freedom-loving Iranian writer Samad Behrangi. He said, dead could very easily come now, but I should not be the one to seek it. Of course, if, it, if I should meet it and that is inevitable, it would not matter. What matters is whether my living or dying has had any effect on the lives of the others. At the end, I 